Can you use a Raspberry Pi in a commercial product? Or more importantly, should you use one in a commercial product? And if so, can you even reliably find Raspberry Pis available in stock anywhere? If the answer to any of those questions is no, then what should you use instead for early prototyping and mass production? Those are the questions I'm going to be answering for you in this video. The first question you need to ask yourself though is, do you really need the power and performance of a high-end microprocessor, or would your project be better served with a lower cost, less complex microcontroller? As the name implies, a microcontroller excels at controlling other com hardware components such as sensors, switches, motors, lights, and so on. Whereas a microprocessor excels at processing large amounts of data very quickly. Now that being said, microcontrollers are also able to process data and microprocessors are also able to control other devices, but each excels in one area. Selecting the correct option is one of the most important first steps to developing your new electronic product. The key rule to remember is, whenever possible, use a microcontroller. Only consider a microprocessor if it is absolutely required for your application. Remember, all of that extra performance comes with downsides, including a much higher cost, higher power consumption, and more development complexity. Most Raspberry Pis are microprocessor boards, but the Raspberry Pi Pico boards are instead based on a very impressive ARM Cortex microcontroller designed by Raspberry Pi themselves called the RP2040. The RP2040 microcontroller chips are commonly available for only $1. Okay, so you know you really need the performance of a microprocessor solution like a standard Raspberry Pi, but can you just embed one in your product and sell it commercially? Well, the simple answer is yes, you can sell a product with a Raspberry Pi inside as long as you follow, follow their licensing requirements. But should you use one in your product? Well, the first problem you're likely to run into at the time of this recording is finding Raspberry Pis available in stock anywhere. Due to the post-pandemic supply chain issues, it's very difficult to find Raspberry Pis in stock anywhere because the microprocessors used are in short supply. Fortunately, there are a lot of companies that have recently developed alternative boards with similar specs as Raspberry Pi boards, but that are designed with microprocessors that are not in short supply. Most of these alternative boards use Pi in their name, and some of the popular ones are Banana Pi, Orange Pi, Nano Pi, and Rock Pi. Raspberry Pi boards are primarily designed for development and early prototyping and not for mass production. So why shouldn't you use them for mass production? Well, availability issues like we just discussed are definitely one of the big reasons and they aren't ideal for use in production. Even without global supply chain issues, the standard Raspberry Pis are not reliably available in quantities required for mass production. This probably won't be an issue when manufacturing hundreds of more units or maybe even thousands of units. But at the typically much higher manufacturing volumes, you may run into issues sourcing so many Raspberry Pi boards on a consistent basis. But probably the biggest reason that standard microprocessor-based Raspberry Pis aren't practical for mass production are size, cost, and integration limitations. A standard Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 has lots of various connectors that take up considerable space and the boards were never designed with ultra small size in mind. This makes them simply too large for many applications. All of those unnecessary connectors and wasted board space along with the fact that Raspberry Pis are really intended for educational purposes make them overly expensive for most mass manufactured projects. The other big downside, which also impacts your product size, is that a standard Raspberry Pi is not designed to mount on your own custom PCB, and instead it will be standalone inside your product and connect to various other circuits or components via the various connectors. This adds more product size and product assembly complexity. Fortunately, there is a solution that solves most of these issues called 
Raspberry Pi compute modules. Compute modules are nearly identical to the standard Raspberry Pis in terms of performance and features, but they're, they're smaller, cheaper, and they're made to mount directly on your own custom PCB, and they are more reliably available at higher production volumes. These compute modules were actually designed for use in mass-produced products. From a software development standpoint, you can expect essentially identical functionality when porting your code from a standard Raspberry Pi to the corresponding compute module. From a hardware perspective, the compute modules are somewhat of an upgrade since they bring out more I.O. pins and serial interfaces including SPI, I2C, and UART. And additionally, the compute modules offer a variety of storage options to choose from. There is also a light option that does not come with any onboard memory. Unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi compute modules are also currently very difficult to find in stock due to the previously mentioned supply chain issues because they were designed using microprocessors that are in short supply. Fortunately, some of the alternative Pi boards, such as the Banana Pi, also offer compute module versions for production use. All that being said, there are exceptions though where a standard size Raspberry Pi may be a viable production solution. If your product is large, has a high retail price, and doesn't need a custom PCB, then there's no reason you couldn't begin selling your product with a standard Raspberry Pi embedded inside. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to check out this video here where I go into much more detail about the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller and how you should select which one is best for your project.